And then, uh, before I get started, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the LOM Foundation, especially Tanya, for all the student travel grants, all well, the help with my student travel grants. Otherwise, I cannot stand here and uh, present my work. Thank you very much. So, um, hey there, um, I'm Shui. I'm a PhD student at Stony Brook University, supervised by Dr. Barbara Chapman. Today, uh, Joseph standing here, sorry, not standing, sitting here, yeah. Uh, and I are gonna um, present our work, direct GPU compilation and execution for host applications with OpenMB parallelism, which was also collaborated with Konstantinos and Johannes uh, from Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Okay, this is a disclaimer. Okay, so uh, let's assume I have a host OpenMP application, and uh, it's pretty simple. It uh, reads some data from a file, and uh, it does some parallel computation. I omit some uh, code here for simplicity. So now I want to have my program run on the GPU, because in terms of uh, GPU computation, it is uh, computation, parallel computation. GPU is m much more efficient in most cases, right? So depending on the actual target GPU, I have to port my application to the corresponding program and model. And this code here shows one way to write the simple case in CUDA for AMD, uh, sorry, for NVIDIA GPU. And uh, it basically shows a couple of uh, key components of writing CUDA code, like we have to explicitly outlining what regions are compiled for and executed on the device, and we also have to handle the kernel launch and so on. On the other hand, we can also port our program to, use, to a higher level program a model like OpenMP, I'm doing OpenMP, so OpenMP is definitely one way to go with that. And uh, with OpenMP, we don't need a couple of those requirements by CUDA, but uh, even though, uh, the, uh, the, because the OpenMP compiler and runtime can take care of uh, all of them, even though the application developer still have to make efforts to port their application to OpenMP target offloading. So what if I don't want to port? Uh, can I just uh, magically call the compiler, say, hey, I want my program run on a GPU, and uh, you can do whatever you want, and what I do is just run the executable, and it runs on a GPU. Well, we are here to help. As a compiler developer, Let's first think of what we should, what, what do we need to make it happen? So first we need to mark all the user code as device code. And we also need to launch it because currently all the heterogeneous program and model still features a host-centric execution model, which means we have to launch the program on the host, right? So last but not least, we need to get those library functions like the fopen show here to work. So in this work, we propose direct GPU compilation, which is a user transparent infrastructure that can compile the entire host pro program to have it running on a GPU. It basically comes, uh, has three components. So the first component is the user wrapper header. It basically marks all the user code as device code. And the second one is the main wrapper, because as we mentioned before, uh, because now we have all the user code as device code. We don't have the host code anymore, but we still have to launch it on the host. So we have this main wrapper to launch the program on the host. And we also have a libc implementation for GPU. Uh, for those functions that still require host execution, we have the host remote procedure or host RPC call to handle the communication between the host and device. Let's talk about them one by one. Uh, let's start with the user wrapper header. So OpenMP provides the declare target construct. So the code, the code between the pair of programs here will be treated as device code by the OpenMP compiler. It is equivalent to adding the underscore underscore device underscore underscore to each global variable or uh, function manually. So if we put that construct in the header file, and that's the only content of the file, and we force the compiler to include the wrapper header when we compile user source files, 
it is equivalent to have the pragma, to have the declare target construct at the beginning of each user's auth file. And in this way, the OpenMP compiler will take all of the user code as device code, including user's main function. And as we said before, we need to launch it from the host, right? So we create a really simple host uh, program. So it only does two things. First, maps all the command line arguments to the, to the target device. And simply launch the kernel using the target construct. So inside the, inside the parallel region, we call the underscore underscore user main function here because it is the entry point of user's program. But you might be wondering, wait, isn't the main user's main function the entry point of user program, right? Yes, that's true. However, we cannot call, simply call main here because the compiler will think, okay, that main function is exactly this main function, not instead of the user's one. So we need to tell the compiler to tell them apart. Right, but uh, as we said before, this is a user transparent infrastructure. We don't want to change user's code. So instead, still in the wrapper, user's wrapper header, we add this simple function declaration. And uh, the, the declaration uh, plus the uh, ASM, ASM uh, label extension, in this way, the user's main function will be renamed to underscore underscore user main in the output assembly such that we can simply call that in our target region. So before we move to the next part, you might be wondering, wait, wh why do you have the teams and then num teams one and thread limit here? Well, in order to explain that, we have to uh, talk about the OpenMP execution model. So here we have a host OpenMP function, and it has three regions. Region one is before the parallel construct, Region two is the parallel region, and region three is after the parallel construct. So OpenMP host side uh, features the fork joint uh, execution model. Basically, only the initial thread will execute region one. And when it encounters the parallel region, the parallel construct, it forks a team of threads, and each thread will execute the region two. And after the execution of region two, only the initial thread which executes region one will proceed to execute region three. However, things are a little bit different on the device side for uh, OpenMP target of loading. Because on a GPU, we usually cannot simply uh, fork a team of thread, right? So instead, we use the teams construct here, and uh, basically, we create a uh, number of teams when we launch the kernel, when we launch it. And each team has a, a couple of threads. And or in CUDA world, we launch a grid, right? So similar to the host OpenMP execution model, only the initial thread of each team will execute region one. But if we have n, te n teams, the region one will be executed n times. That's the reason that we set number of teams to one to uh, make sure that the user's main function uh, or the entry point is only executed once. Okay, then let's move to the last part, the standard C library. Um, the standard C library functions can be generally divided into three categories. The memory-related functionality, the utility functions, and the IO access. So, for the malloc and free, the GPU support varies widely among different vendors. So we implement, implemented our own dynamic uh, heap allocation to bridge the gap among different vendors. For those utility functions, they can typically directly run on a GPU, so we simply implement them, partial of them actually, uh, in a device library, and that will be linked into the user's application. For the I.O. access, uh, because all those I.O. access, we have to go through host execution, right? So we implement the host RPC scheme. And our host RPC scheme basically works in this way. It is a synchronous, stateless uh, client-server protocol. And the GPU is the client sending all the requests to, and uh, uh, waiting for the complete. And the, G uh, sorry, the host side is the server 
uh, receiving all the requests, handling all the requests, and uh, acknowledging the completion. Uh, sorry, the completion. And uh, here we are using the implementation of fopen to demonstrate how a, a libc a function that requires host execution can be implemented with our host RPC's uh, mechanism. So on the left-hand side, it is uh, the device-side implementation, which basically is the, the function that is actually called on the device. So we first create a descriptor and set the uh, function ID to fopen and the number of uh, arguments to two. And then we copy the corresponding pointer arguments to a buffer that can be, direct, uh, can be accessed on the host because not all the uh, memory can be accessed on the host. And we add the two arguments and the send the request. On the, on the host side, the right-hand right side, we first get the two arguments and call the actual uh, function f open here. And after that, we set the return value and return. So now to put things together, if we want to have the entire user program to run on the GPU, we can simply, uh, first, when we uh, sorry, compile the user source files, we just need to include the wrapper header, user wrapper header, and we also need to compile the uh, host program, the host program, a uh, really simple program, uh, program to launch the kernel, and then link them together. Of course, we have to use the OpenMP compiler flags all the way because we are using OpenMP features here, so. And uh, our solution does have a, a couple of uh, limitations. The first one is uh, arbitrary uh, library functions because we, we don't support that because uh, it requires uh, the device side and the host side stop code uh, to be either written by hand or generated automatically beforehand. And uh, we don't support variadic functions either because on the GPU we don't have the facilities to process all the arguments, the variadic arguments. And uh, as we mentioned before, we have a single team execution and that really limits the number of threads we can use on a GPU. And it severely impacts the performance, as I will show next. So this figure shows the slowdown. So it is slowdown. Uh, I have to confess. It is slowdown of the um, OpenMP version, host version code using our code versus the host OpenMP version and the original target offloading version. So our framework, the input of our framework is a host OpenMP uh, app, uh, application, and the output is an application that can run directly on the GPU, to entirely run on the GPU. And uh, uh, the host, we, but uh, yes, before, uh, please note that we did modify the user's application a little bit to work around those limitations, though we want to be, you know, the user transparent. And uh, the original host version has everything running on uh, CPU, and uh, the original target offloading have, has the serial execution part on CPU and the parallel computation part on GPU. So there are three main reasons that we have such slowdown. The first one is the single thread execution part is much slower in our work because a GPU thread is much slower than a CPU thread, right? For the mini build benchmark here, that benchmark has thousands of f reads runtime function call, and each of them only reads a small amount of data, like six bytes. So any IO access has to go through our host RPC scheme, having the communication between host and device. It is quite expected to have that slowdown. And lastly, we have the single thread execution, sorry, the single team execution, and uh, uh, for example, the RS bench here, we can only use 256 threads, while the original target offloading version can use more than 10 million threads. So yeah, even though those 10 million threads will not be executed uh, all at the same time, but still we have a really large gap between, uh, between that. So we are aware of those limitations. So we, have, we are working, currently working on a new prototype that can lift all the limitations. So 
it can support the arbitrary library function calls uh, and uh, variadic functions by using a new link time optimization path. And uh, for the uh, single time execution, which is the performance issue we have, we use basically use multiple teams if a parallel region semantically allows it. So our preliminary result already shows that we can support a lot of more um, arbitrary functions. And uh, our, uh, for the R uh, access bench, the computation part of RS bench can have the same performance as the original target of loading version. So even for those cases that parallel regions cannot semantically are not feasible to use multiple teams, we are working on the large team support that can have more than 1024 threads. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention the thread limit 1024 before. So it is the actual, uh, because by default, LVM OpenMP launches uh, 128 threads if users uh, doesn't uh, specify the number. Uh, so we want more threads, right? Because as we can show here, we, we can see here, we have a really bad performance because we don't have enough threads. Um, we want more threads, so we have the thread limit 1024 in that. Uh, that is usually the hardware limit. Uh, but here, we want to get around of that. We want to have a, a large team that can have more than 1024 threads. And at the same time, Joseph was, is also trying to compile the part of libc that can run directly on GPU um, for, uh, using the LVM libc. So we will upstream everything if we get things to work. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks. So, so, so thank you, today. So any more questions, please come to Mike. when for CPU it's just enough to use parallel four for the GPU, you need to have teams distribute parallel four. Yeah. So do you implicitly insert these teams distribute when, as you said, or how do you overcome this limitation? And another question, do you support CMD construct? Okay, thanks for question. Yeah, so the question is, uh, do I force to use uh, target teams distribute parallel four in my implementation? Right, the first yep. question. Yeah, so we don't use target team distribute four because we don't have the distribute part. We use a teams construct, but we force to use only one team, as we mentioned before, we want the semantically correct, right? And uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, what about your uh, second question? Uh, CMD construct. Yeah, CMD is uh, not working on GPU right now, but we do have uh, uh, people working on the CMD support team. So, mm, thank you. yeah, thanks. Hey. Uh, thanks for your talk. What about all the like bells and whistles of C++, like um, virtual or overloading and stuff? Does it all work on GPU, or is that unsupported and needs to go back to the host? Yeah, if, so especially for virtual functions, as far as I can tell, it's not supported on GPU. It's not because of work, it's just generally not. Am I right? We're working on it. Oh, okay, yeah, we are working on that. <laughs> yes, okay. supposed to, yeah. 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 Um, great talk, thank you. So I uh, have two questions. One is uh, in your last slide, you said that you, for a parallel region, uh, if it semantically allows it, you can use more teams. But earlier in the talk, you said it was uh, that the restriction was based on the semantics of the serial region, right? right. So that's my first question. The second question is: uh, Does this uh, also support task model? Uh, okay. Task constructs. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Yeah. So here we use multiple team. It's not like we simply use team like team distribute parallel for in our work. Actually, we split the kernel because currently all the user program running on the GPU, right? So we split the kernel. We, when, when we encounter a parallel region, and that is feasible to use multiple teams, we launch another kernel from that kernel. So in, yeah, in this, way, in this way, we can use more teams, more threads, and so on. And uh, for the second question, the tasking part, right? So tasking are not supported on the GPU yet. Uh, is, uh, so uh, we're still working on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.